Hello and welcome to SaaS Bootcamp's project video. First, before I say anything else, if you've made it this far into the bootcamp and you are now interested in completing the project for this bootcamp, then I want to say congratulations to you. I'm really glad you made it this far and I'm glad that you are exploring the project as well in order to try and increase your SaaS skills. Um, before I go further, I will add though that the project for this bootcamp was actually based off of a real project that I was working on a few years ago. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to uh, present to you all some of the challenges that you will face if you are really working on this project. If you're really working on a health services research project using SAS and all sorts of challenges that usually throws at you. So this project is challenging. This project is not going to be straightforward, but it is meant to represent some of the challenges that you will actually have to face if you ever decide to do your own project using SAS. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys the objective of the project. I'm going to describe to you what data sets I'm giving you and then what you need to accomplish, right? So let me begin by talking about what the nature of the project was and what the goal was as we were working on it a couple of years ago. I have since abandoned this project and I'm not working on it any longer. So if anybody wants to actually use these data sets, which are real data, by the way, to actually complete the project and, and uh, publish their results, you are absolutely welcome to do so. This is just not something I'm working on currently. Uh, okay, so the research question that we were interested in when we were pursuing this project was we were interested in marijuana legalization in the United States. Several states in the United States have passed laws that have legalized marijuana to some extent or the other, and that has changed how marijuana is uh, dispensed or used in these states. Right? Some states have uh, laws where medicinal marijuana is legal, where uh, prescriptions can be written for marijuana, and in some states, marijuana is completely illegal. The state I live in, Mississippi, for example, is, is a good example of that. But in some states, marijuana is actually recreational, and you don't even need a prescription to use certain limited amounts of marijuana. And several states, more and more states, are now passing laws that make marijuana recreationally legal. Right? Uh, so I was interested in trying to understand if this legal status of marijuana is related to how many individuals are dying from opioid overdoses in a given state, uh, and if we can draw, draw that correlation between legal status of marijuana and opioid mortality. In order to accomplish this project, I use several publicly available data sets. So all of the data that you see in this project for this, for this bootcamp are all real data. They were all either extracted from websites where marijuana legal status was available, for example, or they were extracted from uh, public use data sets provided by CDC, NCHS, or AHRQ to determine rates of opioid mortality or to determine rates of other variables that we were interested in in any given data set, uh, in any given state, excuse me. Uh, in order for this project to work, we actually are interested in about a 13 year time period, right? Because we were interested in a 13 year period from 2002 to 2014, during which several states actually changed the legal status of marijuana. So we wanted to compare states that were illegal and see how many opioid mortalities they had and then compare them to the opioid mortalities after the law was changed. So we are interested in all 50 states in the United States and we are interested in a 13 year time period from 2002 to 2004. Before I introduce you to guys to all of this data sets that you will have to work off of, I actually want to do this backwards. So I want to first show you guys the output data set that you need to create, right? And once you see that output data set and you visualize it, then you can look at the individual original data sets and how you can start transforming them to get to the final output data set. I'm going to show these on SAS on my computer, but all of these files will be uploaded to SAS Studio so that you can start working on them within SAS Studio if you want. So this is what the output data set should look like when you complete this project, right? So the output data set should have 714 rows in it. And it should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 different columns. So 12 columns and 714 rows. And basically, each state is represented within this data set. And each state is present in the data set 14 times. I think I said 13 earlier, excuse me. There are uh, 14 rows for each data set because we go from 2002 to 2015, I believe. Uh, 
Um, so for each state, there are 15, 14 different rows. Each row corresponds to a different year, 2002 all the way to 2050. Now I will also describe what these other variables look like and then we will see what your input data set look like. Uh, so the time variable tells you what year we are considering. The M underscore status variable tells you what was the status of marijuana in that state in that year. Zero means that marijuana was illegal in that state. One means that marijuana was legal for prescriptions for medicinal use. And two means that marijuana was legal for recreational use in that state. So AK in Alaska, uh, marijuana was legal for medicinal purposes from 2002 to 2014. In 2015, Alaska passed a law which made recreational use of marijuana legal. So there's a two right there. If you look at Alabama, for example, my next state in this list, from 2002 to 2015, the whole time period, use of marijuana was completely illegal in the state of Alabama. So those numbers are a zero for the M underscore state variable. Next, I want to talk about PMP underscore status. PMP underscore status is a variable that captures the use of prescription drug monitoring program data. Uh, prescription drug monitoring program, without getting into too much of the details here, is basically a program that helps prevent uh, opioid misuse in a given state. This variable is zero if the state had that program, and it's a one if the state, sorry, it's a zero if the state did not have the program. It's a one if the state did have the program. For example, in Alaska, the prescription drug monitoring program was started in the year 2011. So there are ones after 2011, but there are zeros before 2011 to reflect the fact that this program did not exist before that. The next variable we are interested in is the ADJ underscore M underscore status or the adjacent M status. What this variable is trying to capture is if, if a given state uh, has any neighboring states that it shares a border with, which have um, medicinal or recreational marijuana as legal. So for example, if Mississippi has recreational marijuana, then I want all the states that have a shared border with Mississippi to reflect the fact that they there is a bordering state with that uh, with recreational marijuana in this variable. Right? So in this variable, if the variable is zero, that means that all of the bordering states for Alaska in this case have illegal marijuana, which Alaska is not a good example of this because there are not any states that border the state of Alaska, except for Washington, I believe. But uh, there are no states that border Alaska, which means that uh, none of the bordering states have legal medicinal or recreational marijuana, so it gets a value zero. If you look at an example such as, uh, for example, Arkansas over here, between the years 2002 to 2015, Arkansas did not have any laws that legalized marijuana. So the M status variable is zero for all of the years. But the adjacent M status variable actually changes from zero to a one in 2004. I don't actually remember which neighboring state of Arkansas passed the medicinal marijuana law. Uh, I think it may have been Louisiana, but I'm not absolutely certain. Sorry, not Louisiana. I think it may have been, you know, I don't know which state, which state it was. It has been a while since I've looked at this data set, but Arkansas has a neighboring state where it shares a border with that state. And that state has medicinal marijuana starting in 2004. We believed it was, this was important to the project because if a state has a neighboring state, which has recreational or medicinal marijuana being legal, individuals very likely just drive over that state to get the marijuana they need before they come back into the state. So we wanted to account for that. Next, the next few columns in this data set basically describe the nature of the population in that state during that year. So the first column, for example, tells you what percentage of the population was less than 30 years of age. The second, pop second column tells you what percentage of the population uh, misuses alcohol or engages in binge drinking of alcohol. The third column tells you what percentage of the state has health insurance of some type or another. And you will observe that many of these columns actually have missing values for some states where data were just not available, right? We also have a column for opioid mortality. This tells you how many people died from an opioid overdose for every 100,000 residents in a given state. So this is not 10%, this is up to 100,000. So 1075 individuals out of every 100,000 individuals in Alaska died from an opioid overdose in 2002, for example. Uh, white tells you what percentage of the state is Caucasian or white in that given year. Female tells you what percentage of the state is female. 
and unemployed tells you what percentage of the state is basically unemployed individuals. Uh, so this is what your output data set should look like. In order to get to this output data set, you will have to work off of several other files that we actually collected from these public websites. Um, the websites that you will have to work off of, sorry, the data sets that you will have to work off of are listed right here. I'm going to show you guys these data sets in SAS, talk about what they look like, and then you are welcome to come up with your own strategy, your own project flow, and how you want to get from these data sets to the output data set that I just displayed to you. So let's look at some of those files. I'm going to work off of the first one, m underscore status. The m underscore status file is a file that we had basically just input into Excel. Right? We were typing these numbers into Excel based off of a, a website which told us legal status of marijuana in each in each um, state in the United States, and we just typed it into Excel. So um, on the left, you'll see there is a column for state. So there are 50 rows here for all of the 50 states in the United States, 51 because DC is included. And then uh, there is one column that says medicinal. This tells you what year the state passed the law making medicinal marijuana legal. If this variable is missing, that means that medicinal marijuana is not legal in a given state. Similarly, there is a column for recreational marijuana. And in this column, we've input the year in which the state has passed the law making recreational marijuana legal. So in Alaska, 2015, recreational marijuana was legal. In Colorado, 2012, recreational marijuana was legal. So on and so forth. We've got a notes column that you are welcome to ignore. And then we've got a PDMP start year, which tells you which year the prescription drug monitoring program was started in that given state. And that number is written here. Uh, for example, in DC, there is no PDMP, so that number is absolutely missing. The next data set that you will have to work off of is the, um, is the ADJ state variable. The ADJ state data set. The ADJ state data set is basically a way to identify what state borders what state, right? There is no other elegant way to get at that. So we basically put it in a data set which has 51 rows for each of the 51 states in the United States and 51 columns for each of the 51 uh, states in the United States again. And you can use this to identify bordering states. For example, Colorado borders Arizona. So the, the for, for the row Colorado, Arizona column has a value one. And then Colorado has missing values because it doesn't border Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, California, Colorado. Uh, Colorado to Colorado is the same state, so we did not count those. Um, Colorado is bordering Kansas, so you have one there. And then Colorado uh, has the same border with Nebraska, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming. So for all of those states, you get a one. For all the other states, you have missing values. So this is basically a grid, if you will, of states, both on the, on, on the, on the rows, if you will, and on the columns. And wherever there is a bordering state, there is a one. If there is not a border shared between those two states, it's basically missing. The next data set that you will have to use is the ALC underscore use data set. This data set basically tells you what is the prevalence of alcohol binge drinking and alcohol misuse in a given state in a given year. For each state, we have both the estimate and the standard error. You are welcome to ignore the standard error columns. You can recognize the standard error columns because they have underscore SE at the end. The, way, the columns that you are interested in are the ones which have underscore EST at the end of the column name. So for Alabama, for example, in 2003, this was the estimate of alcohol use prevalence. In 2004, this was the number, 2005, 2006, 2007, 8, and it goes on up until 2015. And, and then there are 50 rows to reflect all, 51 rows to reflect all 51 uh, states in the United States along with DC. And uh, information is presented for each year of the data starting from 2003 all the way up to 2015. Uh, 2002 data were not available. So unfortunately, that's just going to have to be a missing value in your final data set. The next data set you should use is the unemployment data set. Uh, it's called unemployed. It, it is laid out very similarly to the alcohol use data set with 51 rows, one for each state in the United States. And then it has one column for each of the years you are interested in from 2002 all the way up to 2015. 
So unemployment underscore 2002 tells you what was the unemployment rate in that state in 2002, and then in 2003, and so on and so forth, all the way up until 2015. The next is the age data set. The age data set again is laid out similarly, except this data set gives you the percentage of the state's population that is under 30 years of age in each year for each given state. Uh, you'll see that the age data set actually has states names listed out in full name as opposed to an abbreviation, but I've included a state variable that includes the abbreviation at the, at the right end of that data set. Next data set you want to use is the insurance data set. Again, it is laid out very similarly. You have states on the left and for each state, you'll have an insurance estimate listed in each of the columns here. All the way from 2003 up to 2015. Again, we have both estimates and standard errors in this data set because that's how we got this data set when we downloaded it from the website. Uh, please ignore the standard error column. Just use the estimate column because that's the only one you will need for your project in this bootcamp. Uh, next, opioid mortality and then race and sex. Uh, these are also all, these all have the same data structure as well. So for each state on the left, you have opioid mortality estimates going from 1999 all the way up to 2015, right? So there are 51 rows, and for all of these years, we have a different column in the data set. Next, we have race, where for each data, for each state, and state is listed on the left here, with state number and state name, you may have to convert this to uh, the state abbreviation. So that's something that you will have to do for this data set. Um, we've listed the percentage of the state's population that was white from 2002, all the way to 2015 in a variable named white 2002, white 2003, white 2004, so on and so forth. The same data structure is also repeated within the sex data set where we've displayed what percentage of the state's population in a given year was female starting from 2002 to 2015, each in a separate column. And again, there are 51 rows in this data set just like the other data sets. So that is a description of all the input data sets I've already shown you guys what the output data set should look like. You are welcome to decide how and what code you will write in order to get from go from these input data sets to your output data set. Uh, there is no wrong answer for how to get there. Any method you use is acceptable as long as you reach the same end point. So the method here is not important. So it's not the journey, it's the destination in this case. Uh, the other thing I will say is I waited until week four to upload this project information to your uh, YouTube channel, because uh, I believe you will need to use all of the things that you've learned so far in the past four weeks in order to get here. You will need to use if then statements, you will need to rename variables in some cases, you will need to transpose uh, data sets, you will need do loops, you will need arrays, you will need to merge data sets, uh, and all of these skills have to come together in order for this project to be successful. Um, I'm going to scroll on this project description file here, just so that you can see a description of all the variables one more time. Uh, you're welcome to pause and take a screenshot of this if you need. I have also included some hints at the bottom here. Excuse me. Uh, I've also included some hints so that you can think about what ways you can approach this problem. Uh, just remember the most important hint here is please ask for help. I understand this is a challenging project as you're working on this, you most likely will get stuck if this is the first time you're learning SAS, you will get stuck on one or another uh, issue as you're trying to make progress. Or sometimes you might not understand how to even approach or tackle this problem. When that happens, please ask for help. You know how to reach out to me and I want you to reach out to me when you have an issue. That concludes my description of the project. After the bootcamp is over, I am willing to uh, upload a solution to this project as well. And you're welcome to reach out to me if you need to ask me how, if you need to ask me uh, to share that sooner as well. Thank you and good luck on the project.